Jesse. We're here with another week of Kidopolis um, through your phone or your tablet or your computer. Um, we are in the second week of June and it is another really gorgeous day outside. I could not stay inside so I'm out here to give you this lesson. So I'm sorry if I'm squinting. It's bright but it's beautiful. We are not going inside. For June and July we are talking about faith and trusting in sorry trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see and this week um, the lesson is going to be all about knowing Jesus changes the way you see everything when you know Jesus everything that you see is kind of gonna be changed so we have um, so many good things in our life that point us towards Jesus we have our scripture we have the love of those around us we have signs of the Holy Spirit and like I said in scripture we have we get to see um, them talk about Jesus's life the miracles that he performed the good works that he did and you know we don't necessarily see Jesus walking around and performing miracles but we have people around us who might be performing miracles in our own lives in our own faith and that can all point us to Jesus and we can know through through that through their goodness and the goodness that we do that we're getting closer to Jesus and when we do that we have just a good reason to live we don't sweat smaller stuff <clears throat> smaller things don't necessarily get to us and also we can know that when things are hard or maybe just not the most fun um, or things like that that we know that the end is going to be good because we know Jesus in our day to day so at the end of the day Jesus is going to be good too, right? So, we are going to switch over to the So and So show, and then we're going to come back and do the memory verse. It's a short week for Miss Jessie because I, I just got to hang out in the sun today. All right. <clears throat> Scalpel. Scalpel. Prep the top for me, please. Mm -hmm. Prepping the top. Top is prepped. Prep the base. Prepping the base. Base is prepped. Mm -hmm. Tweezers. Tweezers. Here's where it gets really delicate. Mm -hmm. Wipe, 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 Closing it up. You did it. Nah. We did it. <laughs> uh, feed me. Feeding you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. And I am John. This is the so-and-so show, buddy, you okay? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, Brandon. I'm, I'm focused and no one's gonna catch me not focusing. Oh, what was that? Did you lose your focus? Oh, man! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do better this time. Why, John? Brandon, I have struggled with being able to focus my whole life. There is, are always things competing for my attention. Yeah, like like having guests on the show. Yes, exactly, like having a guest on the show. It, it totally breaks my concentration. It's time for someone who knows stuff. Yeah. Seat. <laughs> yep, right there. Okay. One moment, please. All righty. What are you... Um... Hello, guten tag. 
How are you both? We're focused. We're good, Hans, thank you so much. Can you tell everyone who you are and what you know? Hello, my name is Hans Decibel. I am an audio engineer with a recent interest in Foley artistry. Huh? And what is that exactly? I am so glad you asked this question to me. Thank you. Many of the sounds we hear in film and in television are not recorded live, but are inserted after the fact by a Foley artist. Oh, that's very interesting. So yeah. well, if I'm watching a movie and, yeah. and uh, I see someone walking up some, some creaky stairs, yeah. the stairs don't actually have to be creaky. They can be added later by a Foley artist. The this yeah. is correct. Wow, that's, that's cool. Well, well, what's in the suitcase? I have brought with me here today a selection of audio properties that I use in the creation of my sound effects. I will now make the sound, and you will guess what is the sound. Oh, so it's like a game. Yeah. I have brought blindfolds. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Here, put it in my hand. I'm not going to look at them. Okay. All right. Okay. All I guess right. it goes like that. Huh. Okay. Oh, this makes it really hard to focus. Okay, John, you can focus with your uh, ears, too, you know. Oh, oh, yeah. That's right. All right. Just listen. That's right. All right. All right, right, right. Okay, ready. Very good. That's the sound of a suitcase opening. This is correct. He hasn't started yet, John. Whatever, I am focused. Yeah. Okay, sound number one. Oh, oh, oh that, that, that sounds like my dog, Brutus, running down the hallway to greet me when I get home from work. Is that you, Brutus? Come here, Brutus, come here. Aha! Uh, I have fooled you. This was not Brutus, but the sound of paper clips oh. on a cutting board making the tippy-tappy sound of canine claws on laminate flooring. Sound number two. Oh, uh, that's a horse! This is correct. <laughs> number three. Oh, I know. Oh man, that sounds just like a bird flapping its wings. Whoa, where is it? <laughs> Sound number four. Oh, it's so cold in here. Is this snow on the ground? <laughs> no, it is just a bag of cornstarch. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm slipping. I, I hope I don't fall and break a bone. Ouch! Oh. Oh. It's a pain! Ouch! Are, are, you, are you all right? Do we need to call an ambulance? Ha! Uh, ha! What? I have fooled you again. This was only the sound of celery ribs. Oh! Wow, that was incredible! Mm hmm. Yeah, I'll never look at celery the same way again. Mm. And yeah. cornstarch, that's amazing. Yeah, this is correct. <laughs> Ordinary things become extraordinary when you open your eyes and ears to the possibilities. Oh, that's a really cool way to put it. I will now explore the space to find ordinary things to make extraordinary. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, okay. I think this is a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. oh! What in the world? <sighs> ha! Ha! I have fooled you for a third time by dropping this box of knives and forks on the ground. I made you believe I was destroying your room. It is a good joke. Yes, yes, that's very funny. You know what, I think that's all the time we have. Hey! Hey! Ha! Ha! Okay, my focus is completely gone now. Then let's get back on track. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Kellen. Kellen! Oh! Oh! <laughs> hey guys, sorry about that. What you listening to? Oh, um, I was listening to an old-time radio show. That's what people did for home entertainment before television. I used to listen to them as a kid. How old are you, Kellen? Actually, I think it would be really cool if we could tell today's story like an old radio show with sound effects and everything. Is Han still there? Yeah. How did you... Take it away, Kellen. Okay. I now present Saul on the Road to Damascus, radio style. Jesus had been killed, 
and the people who didn't like what Jesus stood for thought they heard the last of them. But then a rumor started going around that Jesus came back from the dead, and more and more people were becoming followers of a new Jesus movement called The Way. They had to be stopped, and one of the people in charge of stopping them was Saul of Tarsus. <laughs> I am Saul of Tarsus, and I shall do everything I can to oppose Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> you there! Who? Me? Yes, you. Are you a follower of the way? I am! Seize him! <laughs> Saul went from place to place to find Jesus' followers and have them put in the jail and even put to death. Saul asked permission from the high priest to travel to other cities so he could arrest even more followers of the way. And that's why Saul was traveling on the road to Damascus. Saul and the men he was traveling with had letters that gave Saul permission to arrest any Jesus follower he wanted. He was determined to complete his mission. He was focused. But then, an incredible thing happened. A light from heaven flashed all around Saul and his companions. Saul fell to the ground, and he heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul heard a sound, but they were unable to speak. The men helped Saul to his feet, but when Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything, so he had to be led to Damascus by hand. For three days, Saul didn't eat or drink anything. What will happen next? Will Saul regain his sight? Will he continue to oppose Jesus? You'll have to wait until next time to find out. You can't leave it like that, Kellen. That's how all old-time radio shows end. You always have to wait until next time. Or you can read what happens next yourself. It's right here in Acts chapter 9. I don't like waiting. All right, then. Besides, there's a lot to learn with just this part of the story. Saul was so focused on his mission that he was missing what was really important. It took a bright light on a road for God to really get Saul's attention. Okay, I get it. So focusing is a bad thing. No, I just think we need to check in with God a lot more to make sure we're focused on the right things. Great idea. Thanks, Kellen. Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys know where I'll be. I'll see you around. That was fun. I agree. Hey. Much ha fun. Hans, you're still here. Yeah. yeah. I am here to say... Reveal the question. Maybe a little more energy. Than... Ah. Reveal the question! That worked? Yeah. Uh, the question of the day is, how does God try to get your attention? Hmm. Hey, that's a good question. You know, he's never appeared to me in a bright light, I can tell you that. <laughs> me either. Hans? Yeah. Many times. How does God try to get your attention? Is it like a small voice inside you or a big crack of thunder? Or is it something we've never thought about? Mm -hmm. Talk about it together. Yeah. Sound waves. So mysterious. Mm -hmm. You're telling me. Hey, we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Uh, oh, is that me? Yeah. Oh, all right. Brandon, do you know what today is? I do, John. What it's is it? our 150th episode! It's true! 150 episodes! That's right, so let's celebrate! Hey, count down with me, everybody. Come on, come on, ready? 10, 10 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Hack. I'll see you next week. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs>
so many things that we don't see. There's so many questions that we have. But we know what we hope for, right? We know what we want. We want to be with Jesus. We want to be in heaven. We want goodness. Ugh, we're not sure. We need to be sure because we don't see it. Luckily, we have some good resources to help us see it. Hopefully, I'm a good resource. Anyways, um, if you guys memorize that verse, Versity or Junior Versity, send me some kind of video, email, text message. Um, you can send it to Jacob on Facebook. My Facebook I turned off for a little bit, but you can send it to Jacob, and I will get you a treat. I will send, bring it to your porch. I will not hug you, but I'll give you an air hug. Okay, we'll do a quick prayer, and then we're going to close this up. Okay, guys? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful weather. That's first of all what I want to say. Um, I thank you for this sunshine and I thank you for this warmth. To me, it is a little literal reminder of the warmth and the joy and the hope that you provide. Um, and I'm grateful for it, Lord. I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for scripture. I thank you that you have given us a black and white set of instructions of how to live our life. Um, and what to do. I know that maybe it's not the most easy to read. So I am so grateful and so humbled to be able to be a teacher for these children. Um, I'm honored that you chose me, Lord, and I pray that you help me be a good leader to them. Um, I pray that my kiddos see me as a source of comfort and somebody that they can trust. I pray that they know that I love them and I miss them so much. Um, Lord, I pray for your word that the truth um, comes out to people who see it. That when we read it, we have your heart in our, in our hearts. And that we truly live the words for you and not for us, Lord. That is what I hope. I, I pray that when we work in your name, it is for your name. I love you, God, and um, I pray for all of our friends. I pray for my friends who aren't here. Uh, well, Lord, at this table. Um, I pray that we all have healthy families and a fun summer. And Lord, I just can't wait to get back in the class with my friends. Um, pray that happens soon. I pray that you heal this world in every way. And we love you, Lord. Pray in your son's name. Amen. All right, guys, you have a really good week. I know it was short today. I'm going to go play in the sprinkler or something. I don't know. We're going to have a good day today. Have a great week. Sorry I keep slapping the table. Jacob told me not to do that, and I keep doing it. I'm just so excited to see you. Um, see you later. It is really warm out here. Do you, do you want some? No, no thanks. Nope. Are you sure? No, I, I'm, I'm Are sure. You sure. Please. Ah! <laughs>